Hello. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different in that I'm going to go over how I made this lovely costume right here, which is my Met Gala Rayla costume that I wore at Katsucon 2024. In this video, I'm going to go over my inspiration, what I used to make the dress, construction details, and what materials I used and where I got them. First off, I do want to mention that while I was making this costume, I didn't exactly take making a video because I'm new at this and didn't think I was going to do this like nine months ago. Um, but anyway, I will show um, some footage of like the interior of the costume so you can see how I constructed it and hopefully I can explain it well enough that you'll know how I made it. And now with that out of the way, let's get to it. So Rayla is a character from Netflix's The Dragon Prince who I've actually cosplayed as before. I used mostly her outfit from the first couple seasons as inspiration. Second, I was inspired by this dress from designer Eli Saab from his Fall 2015 collection, which I just love this collection of dresses, and I highly suggest that if you like this one, you should check out the rest of the collection. Now that I had my inspiration, I sketched out a design that I thought would look like Rayla going to a Met Gala. So here is my awful-ish sketch that I drew. And now once I had that out of the way, I, um, I got to work. Now on to how I made it. For the main dress, I used two patterns. One is a simplicity dress pattern for the top and a Vogue pattern for the skirt. So I made adjustments on both patterns. In that for the simplicity dress for the top, I added some long sleeves here from another pattern that I have. For the skirt, because I've had this pattern for like 15 years, um, I had to add a little bit extra to the side seams um, because I'm not the same size that I was when I originally cut out the pattern like so long ago. Anyway, the skirt pattern is also basically four pieces. So, um, one of the seams goes right down the middle in the side here. So for the lace overlay, I eliminated that seam, but for the underdress, it's still there. For the fabrics, I originally wanted the underdress to be a navy blue satin, but I couldn't find any at my local Joann's and I really didn't want to deal with the hassle of ordering online, getting fabric samples, and et cetera, et cetera. So instead, I just used some black satin that I already had in stock, and thankfully I had enough for both the top and the skirt, and the skirt takes a lot of fabric. The sequin lace overlay here is actually from an Etsy seller that I will post a link down below, and it is it was a little pricey, but it is also very gorgeous. But I will say sewing sequins can be a little precarious because you know, if you put it through your machine, it can break a needle if it hits it just the right way. The green lace applique I also bought from an Etsy seller, and all I did was just cut out the design, and then I applique it on the dress. So I started at the top of the dress first. I always create a mock-up out of cotton, but since I've made this dress several times before, I already knew where I needed to make adjustments, so I just used the lining fabric for the mock-up. Normally, I save my mock-up fabric for patterns later on, but since I didn't have to do that, that's why I used it as the lining. Basically, I followed the pattern's instructions for the top, making the outer layer with black satin, which I edge stitched so it wouldn't fray, and the black broadcloth for the lining. This top does require boning, and usually I use plastic boning for this dress, but I didn't have any in my stock, but I did have steel boning in mostly the right lengths. 
Some of them are like a smidge too long, but I, ha I just made it work because I didn't have boning and I was too lazy to get more. Once I had the underlayer finished, I worked on the lace overlay using the same pattern, but since I wanted sleeves, I used a basic sleeve pattern I had and used that. When cutting out the lace fabric, I was very careful as to where I wanted the lace pattern as I wanted less sequins on the bodice than on the skirt. For the lace, when sewing the seams, I did a French seam so that the fabric wouldn't fray and any loose sequins would be contained. Now you're probably asking, Beth, what's a French seam? So a French seam is basically, it's an enclosed seam. Instead of sewing the right sides together like you're supposed to, you sew the wrong sides together first, then you trim the allowance, and then you flip it around, and then you sew the right sides together to enclose the live edge. Once the lace bodice was together, I basted the underlayer and the lace together at the waist seam. For the skirt, I again edge stitched the black satin underlayer so it wouldn't fray. And I built it basically as the pattern says, although I omitted the lining that is in the pattern because that's just too much fabric. I did the same for the lace layer, except I took out the middle seam and added a seam allowance on the, to the side seams to make up for it. And I also did a French seam on the inside as well. I basted both skirts together at the waist seam and then sewed the bodice and skirt together. Once I installed the zipper, I then hemmed both of the skirts. I did have to hand sew the hem of the sequin dress because I couldn't get it through my sh machine without breaking 10,000 needles. So I had to hand sew it and it was a pain in the butt, but I got it done. After the dress was constructed, I then cut out all of the green lace pieces and then hand sewed them onto the dress. And then this uh, metal belt here I bought from Amazon and I'll put that link below if it's still on Amazon. So I knew I wanted some sort of shoulder jewelry thing. Um, and I was like, hey Beth, why don't you do scale mail? You've done it before. So that's pretty much what I did. I did have to relearn how to do the scale mail, but it was pretty easy to pick it back up. Um, the shoulder pauldrons were a bit easier for me because they're like the basic shape of scale mail, so they're triangular. I did have problems with the choker because I've never scale mailed something with just a straight edge like this before. I still think it looks a little wonky, but for all intents and purposes, it worked for the convention. Um, and I might change it in the future, I don't know. Alright, once I scale mailed everything, I then had to attach it all together. So I had some silver chain already in my stock, so I basically just attached it with a bunch of jump rings. Um, for these smaller chains, I bought the chains from Michaels, um, and I also attached them with jump rings in various spots because I knew I wanted it to be dangly. Um, and then this pendant thing um, I bought from Fire Mountain Gems. The wig. So I suck at styling wigs. I'm terrible at styling hair in general. So this wig was a bit of a challenge for me. So the wig is an Amy Classic lace front wig from Art of Wigs in basically white. Um, and I knew I wanted like a half up, half down style. For the bun, I'm not sure if I can explain this very well, but basically I parted the hair horizontally and then I kind of made a bit of a ponytail and kind of pulled some of it through and then I took the hair that wasn't pulled through and I twisted it and then wrapped it around the loopy bun and then I sprayed a huge amount of hairspray and tried to secure it with bobby pins. 
I also did some tiny little braids in the back when I wanted to do more, but I didn't have enough hair in the back and the weps were on back order. So I just made it work with what I had. Um, I also did a couple of bigger braids that kind of looped into the bun as well. For the bangs, I tried to follow many YouTube videos and cosplay tutorials of how to do anime bangs and I mostly got it right. Um, I basically teased it and then tried to like curl it um, over a brush or something to try and get it poofy and then laid non-teased hair over it. I kind of failed, but you know, it worked for the most part. Um, for the Halo crown, I actually ordered it from Etsy um, and I'll put the link in the description below. For the horns, I made these for the first Rayla costume I did. Um, I made them with foam clay by making them into like noodles first and then shaping them into the horn shape and letting them air dry. Once they were dry, I painted them black and added the gray stripes and then I shellacked it with like shiny Mod Podge. Um, sometime over uh, me moving though, one of the tips broke off so I'll have to fix that sometime soon. And that is how I made my Met Gala version of Rayla. I hope this video is helpful to someone out there, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments below if you like this kind of video, because I can always do more. No, seriously, I've been cosplaying for 20 years. I can do more. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.